Good afternoon to everybody. It is a great pleasure to participate at this seat 2021. Our paper regards geodiversity and soils in Ubatuba Municipal in Brazil, a way of teaching school kids about the soils where they occur. On. We've been working on this issue for six years and we have many good examples of how important is the university research work when on deals with local communities. This paper has been prepared by me, Dr. Maria George, and by Professor Antonio Guerra. I hand it over you to Professor Guerra. Thank you. Good afternoon to everybody. First of all, I'd like to thank Dr. Colin Booth for having invited us to present this paper today. Well, first of all, I'd like to explain what geodiversity is. There are several uh, authors all over the world, and one of them is Gray. And he says that the term geodiversity emerged in the early 90s as an analogy to biodiversity, that's great, 2004 and 2008, as a manifesto in the sense that abiotic materials and processes in nature had in the field of environmental conservation as much attention as diversity of living beings. And Gray, in 2004, presented a very comprehensive, comprehensive concept for geodiversity, which is natural variety of geological minerals, rocks, and fossils, geomorphological relief forms and active processes, and soil features, including their assemblages, relationships, properties, and interpretation. And here I can show you some examples. These are some minerals in Ubatuba Municipality. That's some very nice views also in Ubatuba Municipality, including the landscape and the beaches, this picture is from the Black Country Museum in the UK, showing a fossil. And that's a very famous uh, photograph by Professor Wenceslau Teixeira from Embrapa, which shows a characteristic profile of the Indian Black Earth, known all over the world. All of them can be considered, considered uh, items from, for geodiversity. So soils are crucial for life on Earth, with great influence on the environment, economy, food, and the basis for human settlement. And the ecosystem service provided by soil and, bio, and also biodiversity. First of them, support, which is decomposition, nutrient cycling, soil and water formation, regulation, climate, water, disease, pests and erosion, Provisioning, which are food, fuel, wood, medicine, energy resources. And also, we'd like to outline cultural, aesthetic, spiritual, educational, and recre recreational. Do you know the ground you step on? That's a question we ask the kids we've been working with in Ubatuba. So even though it's essential for life on the planet, it often goes unnoticed about its functions. A simple walk along a trail can be an, an excellent exercise in observing and reflecting on the soil around us and under our feet. So that's a trail called Sitio Lama Mole Trail in Ubatua Municipality, Sao Paulo State. Lama Mole in Portuguese, in English, means soft clay. Uh, so, so we've been looking at and monitoring too soil erosion considering its physical, chemical and biological parameters and we have set up a soil experimental station which I'm going to show you later on in this presentation in Ubatuba. Uh, we've been working on environmental education with school kids in the field a production of materials such as booklets and interpretative panels too, which I'll show it to you later on. 
So this map has been prepared by Dr. Maria Jorge as part of, of her postdoc research. So it's a geotouristic potential in the southern region of Ubatuba, Maranduba drainage basin, basin. And shows here uh, the main rivers and also the trails uh, we've been looking at these six years and the use of a trail as a geotouristic route and educational activities. So different photographs like this one, which is called uh, white water waterfall. White water is in Portuguese is Agua Branca and some nice rock outcrops like basalts. And this one is a, it's a dike, basalt dike uh, between uh, granites in Ubatuba municipality. That's soil erosion in Sete Praias trails. Sete Praias means seven beaches in English. And you can he see here this red, marked in red, which is a seven uh, beaches trail. And you can see different aspects that we show to the students and the tourists too. And because this trail uh, can take some, something like 8,000 and 10,000 people on a nice sunny weekend, and those tourists walking and stepping on these trails increases bulk density, which, de which decreases porosity, increasing runoff, starts, start, which starts reeling on the trail. Mm -hmm. uh, that's another one which we, I have showed to you before, soil erosion in Loma Mole Trail, soft clay trail. It's here, this, this yellow line. And some students here and tourists too, and they grow banana trees and other kinds of trees, tropical trees. And you can see here again, uh, very compacted soil, uh, which starts reeling. So the site has been used by rural tourism, observers of birds, which we call bird watching, and by students of various school levels. And several projects use the site as a laboratory, as environmental pedagogical tourism project focused on environmental and historical issues. This is Sitio Recanto da Paz, which is a small farm, and they produce ginger, organic ginger. So that's uh, one of the uh, panels sh uh, showing the tourists and the students, uh, school kids. And that's the place where they produce ginger. So a city of Recanto da Paz offers rural tourism activities like walks along trails, bird watching, experiences in the plantation, and in the vegetable garden too. It also offers agricultural, craft and gastronomy workshops, the main one being culinary, with the use of ginger produced at the farm. So they produce kind of honey, crystals, sweets, cakes, uh, syrup, uh, everything with this organic uh, ginger. And that's important because they sell to, to tourists and to the local communities and this generates income to the people who live in this area. So those are some of the interpretative panels. And this is the trail. So this is panel one, which is quite close to the ginger plantation. That's panel two, some 200 meters uh, after the panel one. And that's panel three, another two or 300 meters. And that's panel four, which is on the top of a hill, about 165 meters high. And then you can have a nice view from this area. So the use of an interpretative trail is a tool that has enabled the students to learn about the importance of natural resources, in this case study, with emphasis on soils and their relationships with nature. Sitio Recanto da Paz, which is Recanto da Paz farm trail, is used by schools and tourists. Just to give an idea, that's panel one, 
which I showed to you before, and it contains the drainage basin with all first orders, second orders rivers in this area. That's say you are here, and that's a nice view of the profile from the trail, from the start of the trail to the top of the hill. That's the main bird in this area, and uh, that's another uh, rural uh, road. That's the top of the hill, which is with uh, trail panel number four, and that's the ginger, which has been created by Dr. Maria do Carmo. As I said before, we have set up a, an experimental station, a soil erosion experimental station. And the soil erosion experimental stage is an important analysis tool to understand the factors and processes acting on soils in the area, how to understand the level of resistance of soils and their resilience capacity in addition to generate data for research on the soils at a local scale, representing an environmental assessment close to reality. It also serves as a teaching tool to spread knowledge to students from local schools and people interested on this issue. Soil erosion experimental station, you can see here in this area, and here's a photograph in detail showing the three plots, one meter wide, one meter wide to 10 meters long, and uh, runoff and soil loss uh, flows on this uh, uh, plot, on each plot, and comes to this trough, which comes to this uh, gallon, 100 meters gallon. So the experimental station has an automatic rain gauge capable to monitor total rainfall every 10 minutes to understand its intensity and a set of automatic soil moisture sensors in the three plots at three different depths, 15, 30, and 90 centimeters to release the influence of soil hydrology with runoff and three erosion plots without vegetation cover were installed at the station. Each one, as I said before, is 10 meters long and one meter wide, which means 10 square meters, to quantify the total amount of soil and water loss through surface runoff. This is part of a PhD thesis uh, carried out by Dr. Leonardo Pereira. He had his vive in 2019. That's a soil profile, profile made by Leonardo de Santos Pereira. Uh, it's an noxious soil, predominant soil type on the site. The opening of a soil profile on the, on the site allowed us to observe and to know its morphology, thickness, transition between horizons, and to identify texture, color, presence of roots, organisms, and etc. The profile, in addition to help the research, is an educational tool that allows us to work with the different characteristics of soils, allowing to contextualize the school content with field observation. That's another activity with the school kids that we have carried out uh, at Sitio Recanto da Paz, this one here. Soil texture with emphasis on soil texture, sorry, soil test with emphasis on soil texture evaluation, soil test water infiltration, soil test highlighting the amount of earthworms, which means organic matter in the soil, and soil test to measure pH. So those are the school kids. We, 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 we've given a short theoret theoretical lesson to them, and then we monitored all those aspects with the kids uh, on the field. As part of Dr. Maria Jorge's uh, research work, she has created a children's soils book, and all drawings and designs have been made by Maria, and the title, everything is in Portuguese, but we're planning to translate it into English so that it can become international. So that means soils knowing its history by Dr. Maria do Carmo Oliveira Jorge. And that's the 12th page of the uh, Children's Soils book showing soils uh, made by men, 
and that's a nice picture of the Indian black earth uh, taken by Professor Wenceslao uh, Teixeira. So different kinds of, of soils, man-made soils. Uh, it's on the 12th page of Dr. Maria Jorge Children's Soils book. Some trails and management techniques by the local communities. That's the seven beaches trails. Photograph taken by Maria um, in 2014 without any sort of manage management. And that's again the same place, the same trail with photograph taken in 2020, uh, last year. And you can see that with management, uh, there is uh, very little soil erosion going on. That's another part of Seven Beaches Trail without any sort of management. And the same uh, part of the trail using uh, old tiles, uh, putting some soil inside it, and then they serve as steps and they protect the trail against erosion. Thank you very much indeed for your attention. Those are some very nice photographs of Ubatuba municipality showing how important geodiversity and biodiversity is for the people who live in this area. Thank you.